Hope it's going now, guys. Talk Narrow City here, back for another TNC podcast. Chris, it feels really good to say that again. Woo! Two weeks off. How are you doing? What's um, your excuse? Uh, what are my excuses? I was working early last week, so we film this quite late. This is, this is past my bedtime now. You've got to put it in for your career, um, haven't you? You have, and, and, and today we have. We, we've good. turned up. Hustle. Um, Grind. Hustle. All of them, American win. phrases. Yeah. All we do is win. Win-win, no matter what, in, in the words of DJ Khaled, who we seem to recite quite a lot on this podcast. Yeah, we do. We love him. Our friend DJ. Um, well, it's, it's not like we've got a lot to talk about. No. I mean... to talk about. The, well, the, one of the reasons we didn't film last week, Chris, was because um, the game was postponed. The Beast from the East got us, and that's not Dear Mercy and Bacani. It was, uh, it was pretty bad, wasn't it? You got yeah. a day off work? Yeah. I, got I, did, two I didn't days want one, work. though. I really didn't want one. You made a snowman? Great if you're at school, of course, but... When you get to work and it's, um, well, when, when you're working mm. and it massively interrupts the flow of things, mm. it's uh, not cool. Anyway, no. enough of the weather, we'll leave that for your day job. Yeah, indeed. Um, so where should we start? Uh, should we start sh- with Nottingham Forest? Yeah, quickly. Which seemed, yeah, let's quickly touch on it. It was nil-nil. Yeah. yeah uh, as well as, I mean, the A47 was shut, which meant I had to go through Roxham and I was working early the next morning. So I ended up in about three hours sleep. I was, could you tell I was on a... I, my, my, my fuse was slightly short that night. I was I was yeah, tired. Yeah, a little bit. And a it didn't bit. help when I witnessed yet another nil nil draw at Carrow Road. It was dull, wasn't it? Yeah. And it's been a pattern this yeah. season. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I honestly just don't. Are you know what worried? To say. I'm not worried. It's, no. it's 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 this season has been pretty much signed off now, isn't mm. it? I think that's that's why. But if, if 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 I would have said to you at the start of the season, it's it's March and yeah. we're 14th in the league, would you yeah. have taken that? Probably not, no. no. And I, I am underwhelmed. Mm. Uh, I did expect us to be in and around the playoffs. Yeah. I did. And I know we ripped the heart and soul out of the club, but I still think with with the so-called experience that we've got on this team, I expected us to be mm. up there. But arguably, yeah, it, in my opinion, because of the fact that that experience has, hasn't been playing mm. um, and also the experience that we've signed has been monumentally, uh, well, there's no other word to say it, shite. What about a few good um, times? Yeah, it's. I don't know, man. It's a tough one. But it, with regards to, to to Forest, I thought it was it was more disappointing that, than a lot of the draws that we've had because Nottingham Forest didn't even sit back. No, they did. No, they did they go didn't from... even look that impressive. They didn't look good on the counter. And it's no disrespect to Forest because, by the way, before you jump in on me, Jack, on this, I quite like Nottingham Forest as a football club. Proper football club, traditional. Do things the right way, in my opinion. Apart from there, have they not been just bought over by multi-million, billion, trillion, quadrillion? Yeah, but I zillion? think their owners are actually pretty decent. I think I think they're okay. kind of buying into the whole. Anyway, thing. I'm all I right think. with Forest, but my point is, I didn't think they came and uh, and, and attacked the game or came mm. with a, a particular game plan. Mm. I thought they were sitting ducks um, <laughs> in the first half, and we didn't take our chances. I mean, I, I was watching some of the Premier League stuff for my sins at the weekend. I just thought to myself. Even the teams there, you know, if you get one or two chances, you've got to take yeah. it. And and a lot of the, a lot of the Norwich fans say, oh well, we'd be better in the Premier League. Well, actually, I'm thinking, well, you'll have less chances in the Premier League, and we can't even take the chances that we're getting mm. now. So, mm. yeah, not not good, not good. No, and, and by the way, just a quick shout off this notepad. It's quite glorious. Your 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 lovely girlfriend Becky is um yeah giving me the notepad. And by the way, I want to touch on this quickly. She was slagging you off for your uh, for your Jack Wilshere comments about Madison. Uh, and, and let's get on to Madison, God, actually. Let, let's do. get on to... It was uh, Hull Tigers, Hull City 4, or City 3. Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, I don't think they like being called Hull Tigers, do they? I saw Michael no. Bailey getting absolutely roasted for calling them Hull Tigers. Um, their owners are, 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 are mugs, aren't they? Um, James Madison, let's start with him. A 21-minute hat-trick from him. Um, is he better than Jack Wilshere? I'm not going to go into this <laughs> during this podcast. <laughs> You know my opinion, no. Uh, but it was it was a well it, it was a it was a fairly average hat trick, but um, it was nice, wasn't it? See this is, right? I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna back back you for that. How could people saying oh it was an average hat trick? What are you doing? No, what are you two saying? beautifully tucked away penalties. I must admit, well he taken penalties. Down, yeah, confident as you like. Mm. His first goal was sublime. Mm. Created, should have done better, mate. Created by mate, the way that he took those those defenders apart there with just one glorious, sumptuous turn, mm. 
It was cultured. I think that's the way I'd Mate, describe it. Was, it. I don't think it was as easy as people made out. Mm. Don't forget that there's a lot of pressure on penalties. Yeah. Nelson Oliveira can't tuck them away. No. And James Madison takes them all day long. Um, for me, it wasn't an, an average hat-trick. Please stop that if you're saying that. That's a load of crap. Um, you know, again, I, I just have to say it, it's just James Madison being yeah. James Madison. Time after time, people say that I've overhyped him. And now finally they're realising why I why I stuck to it, why I said it. I'm, I'm sorry to say it, but I hate to say I told you so. I mean, I saw I saw um I saw Rob Butler tweet at, at the weekend. I think it was at half time. He said, that "Don't give me this kind of nonsense that that James Madison should have been loaned to Aberdeen because he was born naturally talented and would have done well here last season." I think I'd slightly disagree with that. I think Madison probably learnt a lot at Aberdeen, and, and what he has done, he's transferred mm-hmm. incredibly well. Uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. I think it, it was a productive loan. I think it mm. was a useful loan. But actually, I'm in I'm on Rob Butler's side with this. Uh, I think he's right. And and at the time, I, I was questioning it massively. I, I thought for, from what I'd, I'd seen of James Madison prior to him arriving, he's clearly cultured, mm. both feet. Yeah. It's naturally, I mean, the most Wes player we've ever yeah. had. Yeah. Get that boy in the team, especially when things were going wrong. And that was down to Alan Irvin not being a fan of, of playing youngsters and. Well, Alex Neal more so. Well, well of yeah. course, Alex Neal, but then after that, Alan yeah. Irvin as well. And look, the loan was great, and I'm sure he will reflect on it and say that was great as well. For me as a Norwich fan, I'm kicking myself. Mm. I, I thought he could have been in in there a lot earlier. And I'm just relieved, and, and, and I feel very, very grateful that we're watching such yeah. a talented footballer mm. in, a, in a yellow Norwich City show. Yeah. Let, let's go back to the sort of the game itself. We spoke yeah. about here about Nottingham Forest. Although it was dull, we never felt like we were really going to concede. And it was the same against Bolton. It's been the same for a lot of games mm. this season. Defensively, we've looked as solid as I can probably remember. Apart from Hull. And then you turn up to Hull, you score three goals and still lose. You think, how has that happened? It's just unbelievable, isn't mm. it? You seem to have cracked the defence. Yeah. And the one game, you don't even really need a great defence. We could have conceded two and still won the game. And... We conceded four. Yeah. It, it was unbelievable, wasn't it? I suppose my question for you is, the defence that seems to have worked the best this season is that back three slash five. Yep. Zimmerman's, of course, ill. Yep. Sean Raggett is on the bench. You think, yep. surely, even if Farker doesn't rate him that highly, it would be better to keep the system the same than switch it up and consequently concede four goals. Uh, look, for, for me, um, uh, the only thing I can put it down to uh, is I think Daniel Farker is potentially being found out for playing Harrison Reed in his wrong position. I think one of the goals was Reedy's fault. Thought, and by the way, I just want to put on record now, I thought Harrison Reed has been brilliant since Pinto's been out. Mm. But now Pinto's fully fit, I fully expect our, by the way, his chosen captain of our football club to be back in our team. It's not just what he what he brings on the pitch, it's his presence, it's it's how he, he, he carries the troops, his pitch wall. them up, his pitch war yellow army. You know, don't get me wrong, he's got the best marketing manager in Norwich City Football Club's history. It's not you, is it? <laughs> but um yeah, by the way, I would love it to be. Are you sure it's not? No comment. <laughs> um but for me, there, there's a simple way of solving this, in my opinion. Harrison Reed shouldn't be starting at right back he should be starting in midfield okay. and before you ask the question I don't think Teddy warrants a starting place okay. I thought his last two games have been monumentally poor mm. um, he's been very very leggy he looks tired mm. he does his, look his leggy. passing yeah. at the best of times isn't that great mm. uh, don't get me wrong by the way Tete what a, what a he had a good opening half of the season didn't he also yeah, yeah but, but what a great servant to our football club but in my opinion right now it's quite evident that, that Tete is potentially on his way out. Why not give someone a, a go that actually wants to be here and actually arguably is trying to prove a point mm. to stay at our football club, mm. Jack? So for me, Reed in midfield, Pinto back in his place, and then the momentum, mm. it, isn't, it doesn't even swing like that. For me, that was the reason, as well as the ref, by the way, that, that we lost that game. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, there were records all over the shop, weren't there? Four penalties in the same game. Yeah, I think... Th- I'm still not sure that that one on Nelson Oliveira was a penalty, personally. I think the keepers had an absolute nightmare, yeah, but there was a lot of I don't think that was yeah. a penalty. But the fourth one, I've, I don't. Michael Bailey said it, I've never seen a decision that bad. And let me also remind you that this is the same referee who booked Cameron McGeehan for when he had his leg broken yeah. for screaming or something. This man has also now been dropped down yeah. to League One Good. for his performance. So that Good. shows that that wasn't a fourth penalty. Good. Let's get away... I mean, it, I think he's... 
had a brain fart or something. Yeah. It's gone it's gone wrong in there somewhere. Yeah, I like that. Um but to concede four goals against a team who are struggling in the in a relegation battle is is suicidal. Yeah, absolutely, isn't it? <laughs> I just have to agree with you. I mean I think it was the sh- I think it was the shape, I think it's the way that we're put together. And um unfortunately I, I said it in the previous game, I think now you'll find um, you know, that we are a team full of individuals, mm. really, mm. again, unfortunately. Do you and think- you know what, honestly, and, and the way, and by the way, congratulations, by the way, before I delve into, um, before Brighton fans give me loads of abuse, don't worry, there is a link here. Chris Eaton, of course, has won Manager, Manager of the Month, totally deserves it, congratulations, great guy, one of the nicest guys in football, mm. but his football was terrible at Norwich City, so defensive, so boring, and we couldn't score for Toffee. Mm. And increasingly, as time goes on, I'm, I'm starting to see Eaton's football in Daniel Farker. I really am. I think we're, we're almost too defensive. We're playing two people try, trying to back up that, that back five, mm. by the way. Mm. I don't think the win-backs are getting as far forward as they should because mm. Pinto isn't in the team and Jamal Lewis obviously is an inexperienced player and we can't expect him to play 100% every game. And we can't score. No. We look short of ideas, which we were under Chris Hewton. We weren't playing Wes under Chris Hewton. And da- Daniel Farker now is understanding why... Playing Wes is actually quite useful thing to do. I still, he's I, I still ridiculously talented. I, I, I do understand your your point on Hulahan, but I still struggle to see where Wes fits in. I think the times he's come on, he has changed games. But if we love Madison so much, I think you can only have one. Look one at the facts. Do, okay, fine. All right then. But, but you've Personally, just said it. You've just you've just answered it. But for I don't me, think mate. he's a he's a he's a he's a he's a starting player. I just don't think he fits in that system. Absolutely not saying that. What I'm saying, Jack, is Wes should have been within that squad all season long it's criminal and i suppose i suppose the thing here is have we have we almost we wanted to score goals you need to find that balance between attack and defense and by dropping a defender out it meant we could use another winger mm. we went with on Hernandez, who i thought was looked really good again oh, by the way he's been fantastic isn't he um, and i mean it very, would have been absolutely fantastic if we had another winger on on the other side who was pacey direct had a good cross on him Maybe even like a Yannick Vilchko or someone. That would have been really good to You've throw in there. Instead of, Yannick. Well, okay, so what's the Yannick. substitution then? Marley Watkins. Is he better than Yannick Vilchko? Are we going to talk about Is he better Marley? than Yannick Vilchko? No. Okay, then. Not. so should Yannick Vilchko be at the football club? Uh, over Watkins? Yes. Well, there you go then. You answer my question. Fair play. Um, yeah. yeah. One. <laughs> Marley Watkins. Um, I, you, you, when I was writing down these notes... Yeah. By the way, your house jobs, have you emptied the dishwasher... Uh, yeah, and have you cleaned the bathroom? Yeah. Okay, so I'll cross them. Cheers, off. mate. Um, you you asked me to write down Marley Watkins presser. No, I don't know why. Yeah, no, it's an interesting one. I think it's a lot. Maybe maybe I'm the only one that's picked up on this, but and it might be it might be just saying it for I'm not just saying it for for argument's sake. I'm not on purposely trying to be con- controversial, but in my opinion, uh, J- um, Marley Watkins body language. And it was kind of tone of voice and the way he was carrying himself mm. during that presser was was quite poor. Yeah, I, I saw, thought it was um, too relaxed. Mm. It was it was too yeah whatever. Mm. Uh, he was too. He started to saying things like he was blaming things like luck. Mm. As soon as you've got players blaming things like luck, you're doing things wrong. Mm. Mm. And it's about time that players like Marley. And by the way, again, really nice guy, right? Mm. But as a professional footballer. They need to start mm. taking accountability for the for the performances this season. He ain't been good enough. Yeah. So sit up straight in your chair mm. and say it to camera. You've not been good enough. I, th- I think it's a really interesting point. Don't start point, blaming Matt. luck. Come on. I think it's an interesting point because I can remember watching Paddy Davitt and, and Michael Bailey because they always do that press a wrap, don't they? Yeah. Um, that sounds like a sort of a nice tortilla, doesn't it? Press a wrap. Um, but he was saying that it, it, it was certainly not the, the, the standard kind of press conference he's in. Players are often very media It was trained. almost like he was forced to do it and he couldn't be bothered. Yeah, I, th- I think I'd agree. But I don't want to jump to conclusions. No. But it, from my opinion, uh, I, I just like to see... I mean, that that press conference is more important than I think a lot of people think. I think fans... Sets the tone, isn't it? Fa- yeah, exactly. Fans are waiting on it with, with bated breath. We want those good quotes that get the fans fired up. It all plays a part of the atmosphere. Um, on a Saturday, Jack, on a Tuesday night, it gets us fired up or doesn't get us fired up. And... For a player to be sitting there like that, just like mm. just giving it whatever, mm. it just 
And, and by the way, it's, it's so frustrating with Marley because he's quite clearly got something. Yeah, he'd done well last season. Look, mate, there was exactly, there was a reason why we signed him. But uh, for me, uh, that was one of those things where, you know, of course, if we're winning football matches, I don't, I don't yeah. even talk about it. Yeah. But for me, I'd like to highlight it. I think I think the whole winger situation is is, is something well worth talking about because you look at I, and, and I tweeted this out and I got a lot of stick for it. But you look at our assists and Madison is is miles. I think he's got ten or eleven, obviously. And then it's like Zimmerman on two, <laughs> Steepman on two, then Murphy on one, Steepman. and and everyone was saying, well, wingers can't get assists if goal scorers aren't putting them in the back of the net. My argument would be, and then everyone was saying, well, we've created the most amount of chances in the league. In terms of actual crosses into the box, we? we're one of the lowest teams. Well, a chance created is, is, I think, a pass that then leads to a shot. Isn't there a stat? Both of our shots lead at like from 25 yards out. Another Madison stat, by the way, before you continue, is he's created the most goal-scoring opportunities in Europe? I think, I think in the... Yeah, I think that is correct, I think. Something like that. I've, I've seen something like that. But in terms of wing, anyway, the continue. wingers haven't been good enough this season. And I, I love Josh Murphy, but he hasn't stepped up to the mark. Marley Watkins hasn't stepped up to the mark. I think Hernandez has looked promising, but still... Early days. Yeah, very early days. I think the only winger that did deliver was, was Yannick Vilschut when he was here. Jack, you cannot say that and say Yannick Vilschut delivered. I think, he, I think he's, he's, oh, a, mate. he was our most promising winger. You've got that monumentally wrong. Um, but would you agree with me that our wingers have probably been our downfall this season? I think Especially when you're playing in a system part, that has one striker. Yeah, I, th- I think they've been part of the reason why uh, you look at... Well, the reason why Nelson Oliveira is coming out wide is because there's a lack of width. Yeah, so arguably you could say well, maybe it's one of the main points that, yeah. that we've struggled with this season. In terms of Nelson coming back in, we saw we saw Big D on Tuesday, slightly underwhelming. Not as big, slightly. He's, he, big D is not as big as I thought. Um, he still looks like a grown-up James Madison, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, there's there's definitely elements. I there. just I don't I don't know what I don't what, know what he is. I don't know what he offers. No, he's not he's not a target man. No, he's not quick. But allegedly he is. But Harry Kane's neither neither a target. Oh, player, the, so oh I see. Where maybe you're he's going a Harry with this. Kane. I see. Where maybe, you're going. He might be, you know, loaned to Tottenham and score fifty goals for That's them. That's it, Jack. That is it. Maybe we're just cursed with these Harry type Harry Kane type strikers. Mm, maybe. Um, yeah, just Sabeni is. Oh, it's too early to judge him, so I'm not going to mm. comment. But again, I don't. I don't care. I mean, look. You know what? Arsenal have got this problem at the moment. I think they're leaving their strikers far too isolated, and I think Norwich City are, 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 are in that same issue. Mm, yeah. We're not getting players. Look, the only player, God bless his soul, James Madison, he can't do everything. No. He scores three he goals at the weekend. He, he scores three that. goals at the weekend, and our, and and he, and the team still let that down. I mean, I'm, I might just... be I might be looking into this a bit deep, but if you're James Madison, you've just scored a, a hat trick in the first half. The first player to ever do it in the first half of an away game for Norwich City, and you still don't win. You must be thinking, "I'm I'm done with this shit. Like, get me out." Am I looking a bit too deep into that? Or I'm just not going to comment because I'm going to try to um, brainwash him to, mm. to, to to stay. I, I mean, I think there's definite chance that he he could stay next season. But I'm just looking at that, and if I'm James Madison, I'm thinking, it doesn't help. I can't. I'm, not, mate, I can't. I'm done with this. It certainly doesn't. It's help. like you rocking up at work, making 100 percent of your sales, and you still be being sacked or something. Not cool. Not cool, is it? Not cool. Not cool. Um, you've also got me to write James Husband down in capital letters. Again. I mean, he didn't play. <laughs> but... No, I think that I think this is in line with um, Canaries Bond. Okay, so let's talk about the Canaries Bonds now. Yeah, let's. Now this was a, this was a strange one, wasn't it? We thought it was going to be something to do with colony redevelopment, and it is, to be fair, just slightly more. Some in depth. people thought we were going to sign Angus on a on a permanent. Well, yeah, the, or even give him a second season loan. I mean, that could happen. Who knows? Um, I made a video on it. If you haven't already, go and check that out. I got yeah. all financially talky. Yeah. Um, what What have you made on it? Because you're kind of good with investment stuff, and you've spoken uh, to some, some people who who know things about investing. Initial thoughts on this? First of all, from an investment point of view and then from a football yeah. fan's point of view because they're two very different stances. First of all, um, the football club have got me to thank because um, I've managed to persuade quite a high-profile investor locally to yeah. get on board with the Canaries Bond. So um, I'll um, take the... Uh, you'll, 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 you'll invoice them. I'll invoice them yeah. for that, certainly. Um, okay, first of all, I'd like to say I'm not actually that knowledgeable. I'm, I've been in the mix and... 
you know, different stuff of that. But the first thing I did, rather than barking out on social media saying, why the club asking me for my money? I emailed my financial advisor, Jack. Oh, what did he say? Or she say? He, he said, said the following. Hi, Chris. Oh, no, that's Shut the wrong up. email. That's the wrong email. Hang on a minute. And that you put her money in. You won't believe it. That is actually the wrong email. One moment. Here we go. I'm here. Chris, I've had a thorough look at this. A thorough look? Yeah. Wow. As it is not regulated okay. by the FCA. Yeah, unsecured bond, okay. Correct. Down. Yeah. It is not something that we would ever recommend as it is not covered by the compensation scheme. Okay. However, okay. Ooh, if, there's a however, I like if, these if you were an ardent fan of Norwich City mm. and had a few quid to spare with an interest rate of 5% mm. and possibly more mm. if they ever get promoted, mm. you may consider a punt. So he's saying, and, and, and this whole unsecured bond, this, I, I still think it's a bit of a grey area. Because mm. my understanding is we, you won't lose your money unless the club liquidate and then can't repay it. And it's, then you lose your money. Yeah, I, th- I just think from a... If you were looking for an extremely secure thing, it's probably not for you. But then you, you're not going to be getting the interest rates of arguably 8% with that 3% club credit. I mean, for, from a personal point of view, look, if I, if I had the cash right now, mm. if, we, if we'd sold more of those posters, Jack... <laughs> I would have been. I would have been putting my my five hundred quid in. Yeah. I won't be unfortunately because I just haven't got the money. Um, but as as I say again, I have got an investor on board to, to do that for me anyway. Um, more than five hundred quid. Anyway, uh, my opinion on it. God, where do I begin? I think. Okay. F- first uh, of let all, me pose positive. Okay. Now, can I do a positive first? Yeah. A positive is a really, really, and if you've not watched it, watch Weber's interview with Michael Bailey on the Pinken yeah. YouTube channel. Really, really interesting. And I totally agree with his ethos and attitude. As a football club, we've been sitting around and we've been moaning about the fact we've not got any money. And Dealer ain't got any money left. She's shy. Dealer out. Right. Face the facts. Which is also a valid argument, I think. Let's not go into that. The facts are, Delia isn't going to sell the football club anytime soon to, to, an, to an outside investor. No. Because she loves the club too much. Fine. So, what are we going to do about it? Rather than sitting there moaning, Tom Smith, credit to him, has come up with a fantastic idea. Nephew Tom. Yeah, yeah nephew Tom. <laughs> Great tour account, by the way. Good old boy. <laughs> um, and I like the fact that Weber and, and nephew Tom, and obviously Steve, the mighty Stevie Stone. I love that guy. God, I love that guy. God, he's got such a great accent, by the way. Yeah. Anyway. So, like, you also wouldn't want to mess with. The, anyway, the point is, I like the fact they're actually pulling their socks up and doing something mm. about it. Yeah. So fair bloom in play, because mm. there's far too many moaners. I mean, you know, one that sits next to near us. Sorry, not next to us. <clears throat> um, <laughs> that sits near us, Jack. Um, well, take the top layer. And it's I saw so Delia's fault that Daniel Farker made the wrong substitute. <laughs> she takes the top layer off. <laughs> she takes the top layer off. I mean, it's constant. So fair play, that's the positive. At least as a football club, we're moving forwards slightly, at least. But I feel like you've got to have a butt in there somewhere. You've just said you're positive. Yeah. I feel like there's there's a butt in here somewhere. The the, the butt is, as much as I love, uh, I absolutely love Weber, and I love his his punchiness, and I love the fact he's a no-nonsense, let's get out there and do it, I thought the timing of it was, was quite poor. Uh, not that you can just wait for the right result, mm. but I think having the right result always helps. Yeah, it's like the season ticket renewals. It's it's doing things at the right. Now you time. say a nil nil will not be Forest isn't the right result. <laughs> I mean, I just I, and also I, I think that the word investment kind mm. of took the biscuit a wee bit. I, I thought that obviously maybe you have to use that word, Jack, mm. and maybe that is what it is. But I think it's it's very clear for every Norwich City fan. We know that. You know, for the club to really now, you know, move into the dizzy heights of the Premier League, we need an outside investor, right? Yeah. To be honest, I mean, to at least I sustain. We are that. outside investors. Maybe, maybe we. Maybe but we don't I, I, our I, season I, ticket. We can. We could invest, Jack. I think the main argument from fans, and it's one I completely agree with, and you, you can't get away from the fact: three and a half million pounds to a football club, a Premier League football club like we were just a few seasons back, is nothing. Yeah. And then five hundred pounds is the minimum. Is a lot to your everyday Stump up, yeah. working class fans. So, but no one's forcing them to do it. No, that is very true. But you, you would. The argument is, I think, when we had the money, why was this not looked at? And I think the answer to that is simply, well, we didn't have a plan. Yeah. No. Totally. And I, and I think, unfortunately, it's very hard 
for and us again, to digest that. Positive for Weber, but that's not Weber's fault. That's not Stone's and Steve fault. Stone, yeah. You could you could argue it was maybe slightly Delia's fault, but it was it was McNally, it was Moxie who who didn't use that money wisely yeah. and spent splashed it on Stephen Naismith's wages and Lafferty. Yeah, he's got a song. He's got a nice goal against Leeds and Ruddy. The same one player of the season. Wages just through the roof. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. For for me, I just and it, it does come. I can understand. Look, let me put it this way. I, I like the fact we're doing something. I can't invest, mm. but also I, I felt like it was it was kind of poor timing. Mm. And you know what? I've got a question. Can football players invest in this? Can yeah. our own players invest in it? Well, I would have thought so because um, Stuart Webb was saying that all of the board will be investing in it. Which seems like if you're Delia Smith and you've got <laughs> what five hundred grand knocking about, you're putting that in and you're getting that you're getting that five percent interest out. My question would be, you know, you get that three percent club credit. What's Delia Smith going to be spending that on? Is she just going to be absolutely rinsing the club shop you, like David you know Lee? She is taking off the top layer, <laughs> taking off the top um, layer. Let, let's move onwards. I think we're actually going to get into questions. Yeah, good time it. of the week. We've, we've spoken a lot about football, and I, I kind of want some questions about anything. I don't know, like. We have to get some good ones, don't we? We always do. We love it. Okay, so let, we, we tweeted out with the standard. Give us your questions. Um, give us your bloody questions or else. Oh, Jack. That's what we said. Um, first of all, Tom Mardell. He, uh, of course, we sold the posters that we never actually mentioned on this channel. It was just tweeted. And Tom ordered a poster, Derby Day Domination. Ipswich fans loved it. Um, any chance you two could sign my Derby Day poster on Saturday before I get it framed? <laughs> Have you ever been asked for an autograph before? Uh, yeah. And do you know when it was, by the way? Which Why? is absolutely hilarious. When? So we were... Was on... it when you were signing your mortgage? No, my old, my old man was on the committee for Adam Jury's testimonial against right. Celtic. Yeah. And he had me running around for him, like, did, like you know, doing the team sheets out and stuff. And you wouldn't honestly, mate. And I felt, you know what? I, I actually don't feel bad about it because it was <laughs> I hilarious. Know where this is going. I basically walked out the tunnel. Yeah before the game yeah. and I was wearing like my, my club tie and everything and this little kid <laughs> this little kid asked my autograph oh no and I, and I just went yeah yeah no yeah no no problem mate you went along with it and just signed it right and I signed it and I signed it right in the middle of the programme as well oh, I, bet he, I bet he was like where is that guy on the pitch to be fair it's obviously worth you know 0.0001p I mean Tom my question would be if you've got a spare sharpie pen then, then bring it along and, and we'll sign it yeah I also don't want to ruin your poster where should we sign it on the poster? Just anywhere, or in the, as small as possible in the corner? I think. Let's do it, kind of near where Tim Close celebrates. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, um, fine. Jack Callow, who's got his picture with Josh Murphy. Quite like that name, um, by the way. Jack Callow. Yeah, good name that. Uh, realistically, where do you think we'll be finishing next season? I would, ex I would expect us to mm. finish in the playoffs. Yeah. And realistically, I think we'll finish in the playoffs. Okay, I think I think expectation should be playoffs. Slightly worrying whether we'll be at that level next season. You'll get more money come down from the Premier League. This is it. Yeah, it's only going to get worse. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm so I'm I'm not worried, but I do think things need to be changed again in the summer a lot. Yeah, and that's probably the biggest issue because you or is it? Well, it might not be. That's Have true. we done most of the hard work? In my opinion, well, yes. it might even be the case that losing some of the Bigger owners might work into Farker's favour. I think, think it definitely will. will. Um, now, this is a really good question, actually, from from Tommy Sadler, who's got Evo Pinto with his heart shaped hands as it, as his profile picture, profile and his bio picture. is simply Evo Pinto. Fair so, Solid. Tommy Sadler clearly a founding member of the Pitch Royal Yellow Army. Yeah. Um, he says, following the release of the new Academy Bonds, how many more of the FA Youth Cup winners do you think would have made it into the team if we had Farker and Weber then? Really good question. I think four or five. Mm. definitely I think it, and it just shows how annoying it is that it wasn't mm. early but fair play I think I think the big thing with, with that FA Youth Cup winning side was is we we massively overachieved in that tournament I think when when you look at the squad that Chelsea had compared to us in, yeah. in that final we certainly weren't expected to win it the other big thing that didn't help was we were in the Premier League and for mm. an academy under 18 to go into a Premier League first team and yeah. you're constantly battling for that win yeah. is so tough. I think if we were in the Championship and we'd have won the FA Youth Cup, we would have seen the probably the likes of Toffolo be a first team regular, McGee and Carlton Morris. I think if they would have had that mm -hmm. two years of first team football earlier yeah. on, then they, then they would have probably got through. But I think 
You can't look back anyway. No, you can't. You can't. And, and, it, and it's never easy getting players in, in the Premier League. And I think the Premier League has, all, has probably had as much harm as it has good on, on Norwich City in recent years. Um, and I think that's probably the same with similar football clubs. But in terms of redeveloping Colney, first of all, it needs to be done. Yep. The place is tin pot. And, and you've disagreed with me at times, but the place is tin pot. Okay, we need to clarify this. So actually, I think the Porter Cabins are tin pot, mm. yes. Mm. But that's, that's, that's Colney, whole, but, pretty much. Uh, a lot of it is, but I think I don't think the whole thing is tin pot. Okay, so you're 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 a, a big change of play, and you're all rocking I'm, up at Colney. Let me just uh, say, just go piece. and do your signing piece in the portal cabin. In, in where? I, thought in I the know, toilets. I know. Just let me say a piece, mate. The pictures are sublime. Yeah, and I and I don't think. Th- but the not as sublime I, as they would be if they were on the Willemots. Mate, the reason why I've defended Colney is I personally don't think it's a legitimate reason why we're not signing high-profile players. I really do don't. Not? I don't buy it. It's just the fact that we've not got the money. I, th- I think if you've got the right money, you can you can bring those players in. Look at all of the Tin Pot London clubs. That, that are, a lot of them are bit better training grounds than us, though. Okay, a lot of them do, mm. but a lot of them don't. Mm. It's all about the money, mate. You, you love Colby, don't you? You're just a proud Norwich boy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It does need redeveloping, though. I'm not disagreeing with that. It does need done. Jake Tidy, whose profile picture is James Madison, and his bio is I've, Daniel Farker, Yellow Army. Can I just say, I've got so much time for a second name. Jake Tidy. <laughs> what a... Hang on, I think I actually... It, it, he's changed his profile picture, actually. Yeah. I'm familiar with that name. I'm going to read every... Twi- I love Twitter bios. Fine, go on. I think it tells a lot about a person. Um, do you think it's too early to be saying, fuck her out? Yes. Horrendous tweet. 14th in the league? Horrendous. Performing worse than Alex Neal? I'm not answering anymore. Do you understand why people are saying fuck her out? No. Charlie Thomas then replied to Jake and put, I hope that's a joke. Chris, it's that time of the week. <laughs> Welcome back to the primary sponsor on the channel, Willemots Limited. It is the daily life of a contract groundsman. Come rain or sun, weeds will always outgrow grass. There we go. And he is a sponsor of the channel. And I did my homework this week, Jack, and I actually looked at what, well, sorry, actually, I always keep up with Wilmot's. Because I follow the guy now, and yeah. I would encourage you all to do the yeah. same. I have been looking at his bowls, oh. seven seven millimeter finishes. Some of yeah, you're, mean, you're correct. Norfolk bowls looking great yeah. there, with a, with a seven millimeter cut. There is nothing better than a seven millimeter bowls cut. And can I just say, my my nanny, <laughs> shout, yes. shout out to nanny, mm. who was a former president of the National um, UK Bowls Association. Mm. Definitely approves of a seven millimeter bowl screen cut. So <laughs> is that one of a so, cut? <laughs> Fair play, Wilmot. I mean, let's let's be frank. Norfolk has an incredible history with bowls. Potters May. host the World Championships. God bless. Admittedly bowls. indoor, so you're not going to be getting your seven millimeter. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to put it out there. Bowls is better than cricket. Oh come off! One million percent more entertainment. One million percent. Honestly. You are having a joke. No, one million percent serious. You watch bowls on telly. You'd rather play bowls. Watch bowls on telly and tell me it's more entertaining than cricket. It's less entertaining than cricket. Mate, you're a giggle. Just comment below. What's your favourite, bowls or cricket? And let's also take appreciation for Willemot's new header. Oh, here we go. Now this looks like it. It does look like it's Norfolk bowls groom with that seven millimetre cut. But to get that seven millimetre cut, you need to seed it. And this looks like a seeder. Right, okay. Um, and, it, and it spreads grass seed on, I think. Can I, can I just say something? Didn't he say he was going to get Jack and Chris TNC? Yeah, on one of the tractors. I mean, I, I, I live to see that. I mean, we said we'd absolutely love to ride on one of Willamont's tractors, didn't we? <laughs> right, we love Willamont's. Um, anyway, what's the question or statement? Um, um, no, 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 no. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Because not only... Is this the daily con- life of a contract ground and come rain? Or some weeds will always outgrow grass. When the beast from the east hit, he's, he's getting changed. more plugs. He's, he's getting more plugs now. He from plays. being a gardener, yeah. to a hero, oh, and my he God. went down his local church and de-iced the car park. So if you want to go and pray, hang on. Mm, I agree. I agree. If you wanted to go and pray for Norwich City, then you can. Yep. And let's also not forget, yep. the rockery bed has been reinstated. Let's not forget, oh, about a month ago, he ripped the, uh, these bushes out. And that certainly wasn't a 7mm cut. That was about a 7 meter. cut. It's always a challenge ripping out a bush. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, 
and they've they've put a rockery in. And I tell you what, I've never seen such a stunning rockery mm. in all of my life. Well, no, this this is a good point because it then brings us on to the next tweet. This was two weeks ago. Great podcast, Talk Norwich City. We've got a fifty horsepower tractor and an eight foot roller mower sitting here with your names on it. <laughs> when the grass is growing, <laughs> you can come mowing. <laughs> I think that's my life motto. And that's, I mean, have you ever seen a man as happy to be at his job? Then, then that's not Willemot's. <laughs> oh. oh, God, I can't do this. I can't keep doing this, Jack. Oh, I'm so glad to have Willemot's on board. But oh. his question, his question isn't really that important compared to the, the daily work he does. Is Farker treading a fine line when he outs individual players or will it bond the team? Has it helped to any of the players he's done it to. Murphy, Watkins and Nelson. Hashtag city till I die. You know, I just enjoy <laughs> plugging his business more than his questions. Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't think I ever fully appreciate Before Willemots came into my life, I don't think I ever f- fully appreciated grass. One of life's f- simple pleasures. Yeah. You know what? When I when I was growing up, <laughs> my my fallback plan was always to become a postman. I think that is a great job being a postman. If all goes wrong with this, yeah. maybe the channel gets deleted and maybe TV gets shut down. Yeah, I'm going to work for, for Willamots. And you know what? Me. I'll do it unpaid. Okay. Yeah. Good stuff. I'll do it unpaid. What else? What's that, what else is happening? Uh, what? In the world of gardening? Or? No, we've done one lots. We've done no, it ha- has, has it helped the players he's done it to in terms of slagging them off in the press? Not really, no. Well, no. I think he's probably made it worse. No, they haven't exactly came back with all, um, all flying, all colours, all guns all blazing. Guns blazing. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that one. Uh, guns. Uh, this is a great... Um, this is from at Run Cycle Cake. Three... Um, he loves cake, he loves running, and he loves cycling. Fair okay. enough. Straight to the point. Yeah. Do you think we're too narrow? Playing yeah. with the width of the 18-yard box, team appear to have worked that out, making it easy to stifle our attack and edge. Yep. We've already discussed it. million yeah. percent. But we had width against Forest. we had width against Hull, and we still didn't beat neither of them. I would argue that we didn't. I don't Two still wingers, how, you can't get any more wide than that. Yeah, I, I, I thought, but we didn't feed it to an L enough. And I thought Josh, unfortunately, was off the pace. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Run, run, cycle, cake. I agree with you. Peter Hunter back this week, and he put, simply puts football in Norwich. Yeah. Um, how likely is it that Todd Cantwell will get first team football at Norwich next well, season? I've got so much time for this Todd Cantwell loan. Mm. I've got so much time for it. I lo- I'm, lo- I'm loving it. Who was the chap who went to Iceland on his holidays? Mitch Yafiti. Oh, what a boy. Uh, by the, by the way, let's, ra- let's clap him up for Mitch Mitchy Efferty. Go to Iceland on your what, holiday. What, what a what a beast he yeah. is, by the way. Yeah. I want to hit, see him in the team more than anyone at this football club. I'm, mate, that's a legitimate, honestly, 100%. No, I can tell. If I want, honestly, one player I want to play for this football club is Michi Afiti. <laughs> mate, honestly, seriously, the man is a beast. Yeah. And I hope he's from the East. <laughs> um, anyway. Todd Cantwell, I think he's been now rated man of the match four games in a row and two goals in the last two games, one of which was in their big derby. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. He looks like a good, good and that, player. Uh, yeah, the, the fruits of our labour. Oh, that was a nice quote. Thank you. Yeah, that was lovely, that. Um, Han- <laughs> Hanley's head has tweeted us. Here he is. I had a bio, <laughs> but Hanley cleared it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, good. I love that. Yeah, Absolutely nice. brilliant. And his, and his header is, is nice. Grant Hanley, headbutting Pedro. Nice shanty. Um, <laughs> what player... What player are you most excited about coming back next season after their loan spell? So we've got Ben Godfrey out on loan, Cutler Morris, Todd Cantwell. Who else have we, have we got? Stephen um, Naismith, Russell Martin. Mm. Well, look, uh, maybe we won't sign Harrison Reed, and therefore I'm most excited to see Godfrey. Mm. I am most. Yeah. Uh, I, am, I think he looks like a really good. Top, ser- really seriously, top uh, uh, obviously, particularly that game against West Ham, but for yeah. Shrewsbury, I thought he was excellent. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I really rate him. I'm excited. To see I, him. I think yeah, I'm, I probably agree. I think when we signed him from York, I was like strange, um, but now I'm like the Alex Neil signing. legacy. Yeah, the, the Alex Neil legacy lives on. Him. By the way, at Preston, he's doing a sterling job. Yeah, saw a great picture of him in a, in a bowl hat. By the way, in a what bowl hat? Yeah, really? just, just putting it out there. Yeah, where was he? 
uh, on the pitch somewhere. Anyway, continue. Tom Cashy, by the way, Tom Cash is a legend. He's always <laughs> Cashy is always there. He's a good old boy, isn't he? By the way, a lovely suit in his profile picture. I don't think that's a Slater suit, but that's a classic prom job, isn't it? Yeah, he loves it, doesn't he? Absolutely he loves it. Anyway, Cashy, um, we said at the beginning of the season that mid-tail me- mediocrity isn't acceptable for a club as big as Norwich City. Agreed. But we're in March. We've got nothing to play for. How long do we accept mid-table medi- mediocrity? Or are you of the belief that we have now found our natural level? Tom Cash, great question once again. Uh, I personally won't be saying, you know, fuck out or anything like that um, until midpoint through next season. I, I think it's quite evident that he, that he needs loans. Of course, you'll remember me saying I had a Christmas deadline in place. Mm. But I don't think... It, I don't think after that Christmas deadline it warranted re- removing no. the, the the head coach. I thought that Daniel Farker had managed to galvanise the, the players. He had managed to grind out some good results, particularly away from home this season. And you know, arguably that's why Norwich fans have found it so underwhelming because mm. those results haven't been at home, no. which is completely contrasting to our normal way of doing things. Yeah. So for me, I'm not going to be you know jumping on any Fark out thing until. At least halfway through. The next Tom does raise it. I think. I think that last point of the question is a, is a real good one. You know, we, we're expecting to be in the playoffs. Yeah, but are we? Are we good enough? I'm, I don't know. Man, I think it all depends on. Uh, I think it all depends on who we sign in, in the summer window. I really do. And it, and uh, actually, it's not who we sign. It's who we sell. Yeah. If we can manage to sell the likes of Stephen Naismith, if we can manage to sell the likes of, <laughs> um, who James husband, husband. Yeah. Who else? Oh, who was that the one? Watkins. Watkins, yeah. Hey, by the way, why didn't we sell him in um, in January? It's just not worked, does it? It hasn't worked. Next, um, Jacob Butterfield. Th- God bless him. I think uh, it's, it is an interesting one because you do sometimes look at us and if, you, if you're basing the, t- the league table, which I know isn't prop, like the best way to do it, but if you're basing it on spend, mm. we're probably in the correct position. Yeah. If you're basing it on terms of team value, we're probably in the correct position. Really? No, 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 no. Well, I think I think in terms of the value of our team is probably disproportionate because we've yeah. got players like Stephen Nason yeah, and stuff on loan. That's, so, that's my point. Um, but that's previous regime. That's criminal. Yeah, that's criminal. Mm. Absolutely criminal. Mm. And I think that's what is fired Norwich fans off about the Canaries bond. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I really do. Yeah. You know, you, you, you sell Stephen Naismith. Hopefully, yeah. uh, by the way, what are we honestly going to sell him for? Mill, mill and a half. And how much? And honestly, and how much? By the way, how much did we sell Van Wolfswinkel for in the end? Oh, like three, I think. Three million we got for Wolfswinkel. He's ripping up in Europe, mate. I'm going to put it out there. I think Stephen Naismith is proving to be a worse signing because I don't think we're going to sell him for five hundred grand. Okay. I really don't. And you, you think he's probably? We've probably spent a good, well, a good five million on wages. As on well. wages. He scored what six goals in his Norwich City career, one in his debut. Fantastic and defensive attack. In one field, against though. Blackburn, where we were already winning four 0 <laughs> and one against Leeds, in which he then got sent off and we lost the game. No, we drew three three. We lost the game three three. We okay, three we, drew, we drew big whoopee do. <laughs> Apart from his they always switch. use that goal. In which case, we'll release posters about it. <laughs> yeah. um, we, we love a draw here at Norwich. <laughs> Matt Self, who by the way did order one of the posters, and, and his um his Twitter header—he looks like he's got a lovely gaff. Okay, cool. Absolutely lovely gaff. Lives in. Well, oh. I should say where he lives. That's probably a bit. Um, Matt Self, yeah. you right, boys? <clears throat> with it, with an exclamation mark. Clearly excited to get his question in. Yeah. What is the best play you've ever seen at Carrow Road? In brackets, against us. I've answered this question, Luis Suarez. Yeah, and I and I because I because of the fact that I hate Luis Suarez with a burning hurtful emotional passion mm. I will say Sergio Aguero yeah top player mate Sergio Aguero ripped us to pieces and you know what he did it not even on the ball mm. it was it was ridiculous mm. um, yeah I, just, I tell I you just one of the best was. finishes I think I've seen at Carrow was Robin Van Persie when I think Stephen again I just hate Arsenal so much when, I can't when say. Stevie Morrison banged in um Banged in a goal to put us one up, and then Van Persie just ripped us to shreds, and I think we lost 2-1. Yeah. He was good. Um, who else have we seen? I reckon Jack Wilshere, he's class. <laughs> Moving on. Um, there's lots of... Um, oh, you tweeted out on the TNT account, when do we get worried about selling... Um, what do you mean, me? Uh, selling <laughs> James Madison, and, and Tom Cash was replied with a with a gif of Gordon Ramsay screaming now. Yeah. Um, Willem Otter tweeted back with a gif of... A chef or someone? No, I think that who's that? Is that 
Tom Cruise. That's Tom Cruise, a chef, what I'm about. Show me the money. Yeah. Um, oh, this is another player. Bristol Rovers polls again, who, by the way, he's always, always here, swinging us. I absolutely love it. Bristol Rovers polls, battles, videos, and more. Any poll, battle, or video suggestion, feel free to DM us. Is Matt Jarvis gone at the end of the season? By the way. By the way, another one. I feel one. sorry not... for him, though. Yeah, let's talk about that. Two years out, comes back and is injured within 19 minutes in an under-23 match. You've, I you've do got feel to sorry feel for him. You have. He's built up a fantastic um, six-pack in that time, though. He's ripped, in, isn't in, he? in, you know, credit where credit's due. At least he could, at least, you know, if he does retire from football, he can make it as a, as a bodybuilder. Yeah, and I think he's done a bit of modelling before, actually. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I think he's yeah. quite an underrated looker, actually. Yeah. I think we actually put him in the Canaries catalogue whilst he was out injured. <laughs> it. Should try and use him a bit. Well, at least, well, I suppose that's worth his wage, then, isn't it? Yeah. If he's yeah. in the Canaries yeah, catalogue. I think I actually saw him faces and places one week. Oh, of course you did. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Um, meow, at Dylan underscore MCFC. Um, By the way, Matt Jarvis. I, I, God, I'll I'm, tell you what, can you remember who's going against Bournemouth? Yeah, we all do. Ridiculously we, good. We all do, and that's what hurts us, Jack. I'd Hasn't rather he got you didn't bring. As well. I'd rather you didn't bring that up. Yeah, brilliant player. Uh, yeah, he is on his mm. day. On his day, when he's fully fit, which is never. <laughs> on, a, on a serious note, against Bournemouth, on, literally I'll... on his day, <laughs> <laughs> mate. On his day against Bournemouth, he was good. He was phenomenal, and that's worth the transfer. He was fee, absolutely though. phenomenal. He yeah, he was. Meow, uh, as Dylan has simply put, um, I got worried at the Reading game. You what? Oh, it's in replies to the James. Oh, he's, okay. he's worried, basically. Okay. It's, 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 the, it's the story of Norwich fans. We just live in constant okay. worry. Um, Rory Ives, um, who just puts, hey, I'm a Norwich fan. Um, time to give more youth players a chance in different systems, question mark. By the way, love the podcasts. We love you, Rory. Cheers. Do we play more youth players? Because you get to this point of the season, you've got nothing to play for. We're not going up. We're not going down. I don't, Do no. you stick a Mitchy Efferty in there? Oh well, it, well, when it comes to Mitchy, you know yeah. how I feel about that man. Mm. Um, but look, for me, and I've, and I've said it for a couple of games now, mm. I think it's definitely, definitely time to to play a different system. Mm. It's definitely, definitely time to put teams on the back foot more mm. and, and, and shock them. Because they're so used to the way that... They know the way that Norwich are going to line up. Who do you think would have been a good player to maybe get defenders on the back foot? <laughs> Maybe Doing I, very well at a promotion I think, contending Cardiff, by the way. Yannick Wulschke. <laughs> <laughs> I think Norwich need to be playing two up top. Definitely. Mm. And I don't think we should be playing with, with two covering midfielders. I really don't. You, yeah, you, you do have a bit of a thing with that, don't you? I don't. I don't think we need it. When you've got Grant... Legend well, Hall that's of Fame true. Hanley. Yeah, there. that's true. By the way, you laughed when I said Grant Hanley's a future Hall of Famer. By the way, Grant Hanley. What is that? You know what? I, I, can I ask that? Right, if, if the Norwich City team, uh, media team are watching this, mm. which occasionally they do, shout out. Um, can I please ask a direct question? What is Grant Hanley having for breakfast? Because mm, I watch can you, can you release it in, in the Canary store? Can you release a Grant Hanley protein mix? Yeah. Because that's going to sell off the shelves. I, I want to be eating that. You know what I'd love to do? I'd love to do a day in the life with Grant Hanley because I, I feel like he just gets home and sort of like headbutts walls or something. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. I don't think he's a lunatic. I think he's just an, an absolute hard nut. You say he's I reckon lunatic. he's the kind Did of guy... Did you see that his he, reaction to the linesman? Hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. He's the kind of guy where he turns up to Morrison's, of course, the one outside Carrow Road where we see all of the transfers, and... <laughs> Uh, and I actually feel a bit sorry for him because he touches the trolley and goes, <laughs> it flies to the other end of the supermarket. Mm. And, 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 you know, I, I feel for him. By the way, Morrison's, since they've changed their hot deli counter to the front of the store, I went in there for my lunch the other week. And you, you know how you normally, they used to have, you used to get your chicken and wedges in a bag? Yes. And it was already there? Yes. They now serve it for you. But if you go in at the right time... Okay. And they're not really selling the chicken very well. Okay. They're just sticking so much chicken in there, mate. Do they? Three pounds for chicken and wedges. I don't want to get any, anyone sacked. Guess how many bits of chicken i got. And, they, and we're talking juicy fillets. Yeah, no, they're here. big old boys, aren't they? Eight fillets and three scoops of wedges. Wow. And, Maybe and that's well, why KFC have gone in, in trouble. Taking all the chicken. Yeah. I went, can I have some ketchup, please, mate? Yeah. Guess how many sachets you gave me? Don't know. Ten sachets. <laughs> Ten sachets? You just got a handful and went... I think he clearly watches the podcast. I don't want to get anyone sacked, but whoever you were serving me my juicy chicken fillets that day. God bless. We're putting you in the Hall of Fame. 
That's at least ninety. So, what was the protein. question? Um, I don't know. I forgot oh, Grant Hanley, he's brilliant, isn't he? Just Grant Hanley, full stop. My moment of the season was when he got he's, tripped. He's, he got up, he then tripped again, and then that. and then nearly ate the linesman. Yeah. Oh, it was glorious. F- fell over, got up, fell over, tackled him, fell over, lost the ball, tackled him, yeah. and then attacked the linesman. Yeah, it was brilliant. So much time yeah, for that. that. Yeah, really. By the way, he has got to be the captain next season. This season. No excuses. No, he's got to be the captain, isn't he? And, wh- and when is it? A, when is it a feasible thing to say? When's the statue being built? I'm I'm at that point myself, to be honest. I'll build it myself. Yeah, I'd invest in a canary bomb to get Grant Hanley statue built. Put it this way, I'm going to be getting a cat, and I and I've asked my missus yeah. if we can call it <laughs> Grant Hanley. Really? Yeah. Why a cat? Don't know, Why not a massive bloody dog and just call it Grant? That's yeah. That's a very an enforcer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's all about questions. Okay. Once again, thank you to all of the people who sent your questions in. Um, Chris, we've got we've got a game tonight against um yeah. Bansley. <clears throat> Bansley. Uh, let's hope the pitch isn't frozen this week. Yeah. Um, oh, Jeff just a nothing game, isn't it for us anyway? I always get these two. Is this the GIF club or they... no? That's br- you always I, get I, them. Why is it? Yeah. It's like when you, playing red, yeah, It's but... like when you say Ipswich. Ipswich. You know what? Since you told me off for that, my mum keeps saying it now. I'm like, give me a break. Like, really? Come on, good. Now. Mama Reeve on the case. Yeah. Um, uh, it's well, switch. Uh, so sorry. So, Barnsley. Mm. I would love Barnsley away. It's going to be a tough game, isn't it? If we stick with the same system, mm. I can't see us getting anything from it. And I'm honestly, I, I do believe that I'm one of the most optimistic Norwich fans out there. Mm. And this season's dented my optimism. It really has. Are you are you that up for it? I'm struggling to get too motivated for it. Mate, I'm not up for it. What about Reading on Saturday? So much interest. Oh, really? Why? Reading is so shit. Oh, mate, don't say that. Mate, they are. Come well, on. well, we're definitely losing now. Mate, do you remember when we were, how many, was it like 5 0 up at half time? I think, it wasn't it 6 1? They were so. That bad. was amusing. That day, wasn't it? How did? By the way, how did they get into the playoffs? Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, they did. That was the worst playoff final I've ever they were seen in my life, wasn't it? Yeah, it was poor. It they was were poor. so yeah. bad. Yeah. Anyway, but by the way, they are Timpot. Just to put it out there. God, you're doing they so get, well of no, praising no, opposition clubs. They, they get the official Timpot Chris Reed button. Reading. Wow, Reading a tin pot. I tell you what, um, I went. I was in a pub today. If we Darwin. lose to Reading, I will be absolutely furious, like genuinely livid, like DT Arsenal fan can, livid. Really? Yeah. Um, I want to. I want to praise Sheffield United fans. I was in. A, I was in a pub today in Whoa. Derby, and there was a. I walked in, and the first thing I saw was a Sheffield <laughs> United frame shirt. I thought, oh God, here we go. It was a beautiful pub, and I spoke to the landlord, who was a Sheffield United fan. You know what? Loads of praise for James Madison. They, I thought they all hated him. I, I think absolutely loved him. I think you've got lucky there. Yeah? I think you've got he, seriously he lucky there. He was a top there. man. He really was. Yeah, but everyone's got nice fans and, and, and nasty fans. Yeah. Just like us. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I'm the nice one. So, we're going to beat Reading, and we're going to lose to Barnsley. I think we'll draw to Barnsley, yeah. and I think we'll draw to Reading. Oh, mate. And is I that think, is that what this week's going to be? Two I, draws against Reading and, and Barnsley? Think, and is think, that what we've got look, and to look forward to? And I think they'll both be nil-nil. Oh, mate, don't give me that. No, I tell you what, no, honestly, no, honestly, if Daniel Farker doesn't learn from Forrest, yeah, they, oh, sorry, mate, you've got. There will ask, be questions. You have to ask questions. Yeah, you've got to change the system, yeah. man. Yeah, and bring your subs on earlier. Yeah, and I, but I do love Daniel Farker. Um, but let's not forget, if even if we do draw nil nil to Reading, we've got an exciting thing going on after the game. Yes, we have. Can you remember what it is? Yeah. Do what, you remember what it is? Yeah. Pizza. Big C. Yeah, Big Cedric. Who's still hobbling, by the way, but so a bit greasy. The mighty me. Cedric has invited us out for pizza. I love Cedric. He often just texts me. He's like, Jack, how's your day going? I'm like, it wasn't going great, but now you've texted. It's going brilliant. I love his... By the way, if you don't follow Cedric on social mm. media, please do, because his story and his motivational speeches mm. really fire me up, genuinely. Do they? Yeah. A bit of fire on the belly. Yeah. Although I, I was slightly disappointed when I said I can't wait for a greasy pizza and a pint of beer... And you were like, oh, oh please, stop a that. Fancy pizza please and some fine that. French wine. Please stop that. We got, we, we're dining out with Cedric Unsland. We're not going to take him to blooming Best Kebab with Angus Gunn and Josh Murphy. 
We're going to Pizza Express, buddy. I, I took him to the. Uh, I took him to a lovely restaurant. He took me out for my birthday. Yeah, exactly. He's, sure a, he's he such a lovely man. Yeah, he is a legend. Such a lovely man. Um, right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching Sorry the TNT podcast. We're really hoping to get some really good guests on in the next couple of weeks. We're sorry we slacked a little bit. but um, We are seriously really, really, really hoping. We're close to something nice. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Chris, have a good week. I'm looking forward <laughs> to two normal draws. Thanks for really pumping me up when it comes to that. Uh, if you haven't already, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. Like it. Uh, like it, all of them YouTube things. And also, if you're on iTunes... Hit subscribe on there, it goes right into your podcast should, app. Should we create a, a cringy outro like all of these other YouTubers? No, let's okay, not fine. do that. Peace We're out. cringy enough as it is. Yeah, agreed. See you later.